and not of evil to give you an expected end. Your end is guaranteed in Jesus. It is guaranteed in Jesus. So all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. to be in God's service just one more time. I don't know about you, but I'm glad to be in God's service one more time. Didn't have to make me live, but I'm glad that I'm in the land of the living just to worship him, just to extol him, just to lift him up and give him the glory that is due unto his day. Anybody know that you know that you know that you're here today because of the grace of God. The Bible said it's not by might or by power, but it's by His Spirit. And I believe that 
we are here today because his spirit brought us here you know when we look at the year that is almost finished oh god so many things could have befall us i heard the psalmist says my feet will nigh slip in oh jesus but it is because of the mercies of god why i'm not consumed hallelujah hallelujah we have a lot to give him thanks for we have a lot to bless his name for we are here today because of him because he loved us the bible says for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son hallelujah hallelujah i love him today how about you you love him you love him somebody you love him somebody hallelujah just tell you tell him that you love him just lift those hands tell him that you love him I know that I'm here today only because of God. Man, I just feel grateful, grateful in my spirit this morning because I'm here because of him, only because of him, only because of him. Nothing good that I've done. Hallelujah, nothing good that I've done. But I'm here because of the mercies of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. The sister said, you know, that your end is guaranteed. You know, God has your destiny all in control. Oh, Jesus. And it doesn't matter what you face or what you have faced. Your destiny is in the hands of God. And it doesn't matter how 2017 look. Hallelujah. Face it with a positive view from God's standpoint. And I know that my destiny is in the hands of God. My victory is guaranteed because God is on my side. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This might just be the last service for the year. So I want to encourage us to just give God our all today. You know, we don't know what tomorrow brings, but we just want to give God our all today. I'm here to greet the visitors. Is there any visitor in our midst? I want to see you stand. Let me ask you to stand. Somebody invited you. You just feel led to come out. Let me ask you to stand. Come on, if somebody beside you look like a visitor, just nudge them. Tell them to stand. Amen. We just want to identify you. Come on, put your hands together for our visitors. Remain standing. Remain standing. Remain standing. We want to... Just remain standing for a minute. Hallelujah. We, we, we deeply appreciate you coming out, you know, to service today, to worship God with us. You know, you, you could have been otherwise minded. You know, you could be on the beach. You could be somewhere else. But, you know, you follow the leading of the Spirit of God and you come in the house of God to worship. You know, if somebody invited you, we want to tell you that you're in the right place at the right time. If you just feel it, to come out and come to this house, we want to tell you that you're in the right place at the right time. And there is a blessing with your name written on it. We want you to just pull out all the stops. And we want you to just join in worship and worship the great God, the creator. The one that has created you. The one that has brought you here for an appointed time such as this. That he can get to do a work in your life. Somebody just reach across and greet our visitors, just reach across to those who are near you. As a matter of fact, here is what we are going to do. We are going to sing this song. It says, ain't no giving up. I've got to go on. And we are going to greet our brethren. And we are going to greet the visitors. Singers, help me with that one. Sometimes I am tempted. Yes, yes. To lay down Let me ask some, those on the choir to come down and greet. And those on the back to come up and greet.
rich to bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he give, grant you the desires of your heart. You know, church just would not be the same without you. And we thank you for coming out today. We thank you for worshiping God. Listen, you can make it. 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 Just keep holding on. You can make it. You can make it. Just keep holding on to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can make it. You can make it. Don't get depressed. Don't, you know, be feel dejected. Don't feel like no one cares for you. Because I tell you that God cares. Just hold on to him. You can make it. You can make it. May the Lord richly bless you. May he make his face to shine upon you. May he grant you the desires of your heart. I tell you this. I tell you this. Just continue to live for him. The, 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 the ship might be rocking, but just continue to live for him. The sails might be battered and torn, but just continue to live for him. Hallelujah. Because we know that he has gone to prepare a place for us. That where he is. You know, the Bible says, if in this life only we have hope, we have be, would be like all men most miserable. But thank God, my hope is in him who is eternal. And he has gone to prepare a place for me. And the same Jesus that kept you last year is able to keep you into the another. Is he wonderful? Can you put your hope and your trust in the almighty God? And I'm quite sure that he going to bring you through. And if you agree with me, say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let me hear you say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, we're about to have the announcement. Whoever is going to do that, could you come and... Uh, we have an announcement coming up and I need a person who is going to make the announcement. Just... Sister Jude, you're going to do it? No. You are going to make the general announcement? Come beside me. I need backup. My announcement is, uh, listen very, very carefully. Uh, I, hold on, I have this thing upside down. Let me take it right way. Good. I published the band of marriage between Tash Bar, right? And, uh, so, so, hold on. I don't, I don't can't wait until I finish. Tash Bar, right? And Mark Harrison. Uh, if any man or any woman in the body knows any just cause why these two should not join together in holy matrimony can you just stand up and stop it now nobody nobody can stop it eh? nobody can stop it so Tashmar and uh, mark you can go on with it because nobody can stop it we praise the lord everybody uh, could you just put your hands together for the couples? The Bible did say that whosoever find it, find it what? When, when, when you're married and really is a really, really the, the right wife that God is like heaven and earth. But you see, if it's the other way, June, come take the mic. Praise the Lord Jesus, everybody. Can we praise the Lord one more time? It's a good thing to be in the house of God and in the place where his honor dwells. I greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. Before I greet the household of faith, I must, must, must thank all our online visitors who week after week after week tune in. There are so many other sites you could go to, but you choose to worship with Faith Apostolic Ministries, and we are so grateful that you tune in and you are blessed week after week. Please give them a round of applause. <laughs> Especially on a day like today, you may be in the middle of your Christmas preparations, but you are pausing to worship with us. We are very grateful that you took the time. Also, I'd like to extend greetings to a very good, well, I met her this morning, Kerry. Kareen, I thank you so much for joining with us. I know there's a blessing with your name on it in the house today. See, she sanctioned it already. And to all our other visitors and the family of God, church would never be the same without you. Praise God. Greet somebody beside you and say, I'm glad to see you sitting beside me today. 
Yes, ma. Yes. You may not have on something new, but you look good. Tell the person on the other side, say you look good. Don't it? You look good. Right. If nobody don't tell you, you tell yourself, my look good. Right. Praise God. This is the house of liberty. Hallelujah. And God is love. And if you don't have love nowhere else, guess where you can find it? In the house of God. I have very few announcements. As you heard before, there will be no service tonight. There will be none this week. And there will be none for watch night. So worship him like he's the last today. There's no service tonight. So give him everything you have today. Tomorrow, next year is not promised to anybody. Pull out the stops and let's worship God today with everything. Amen, everybody? Amen. Praise God. All right. Faith Bible College. Registering and re-registering for Faith Bible College starts today and it runs until January 8th. Please see Sister Dorian Rowe or Sister Therese Robinson if you are interested in enrolling for Faith Bible College. Those who have pledged monetary or money are kind for the dinner next week. It is very important that you speak with brother and sister Dennis Richards and sister Yvonne Rowe today. Let me repeat, those who had pledged money or kind for the dinner next week, it is very important that you speak with brother and sister Dennis Richards today and sister Yvonne Rowe. Brother Randolph Henry, or one of our ushers, has again lost a family member. And we're asking that you keep him and the rest of his family in prayer in this their time of bereavement. And the last announcement for this year, all Sunday school, community, and children church workers, please remember your registration today of $500 for the trip on April 1st. And please speak to Sister Romaine Murray, the latest next week. Amen, everybody. God bless you. These are your announcements for 2016. Thank you very much. June, uh, let me hear you praise the Lord again, folks. Uh, Sister June did say earlier on that... Um, for those of us that make pledge for, uh, for the dinner for next year, you should see Sister Evan Rowe, our brother and Sister Richards. But how about those that did not make a pledge and you would love to do so? Can I see you raising your hand? Okay. Uh, can you push the up like a hand? All right. Uh, do you know brother and Sister Richards? Anybody else? You really want to make a pledge. You want to support this thing. All right. You know who you're going to talk to? Fine. Anybody else? I only see two hands. We, we, we still need some more support. Only one hand in the choir? So the total amount is just three people who haven't made any pledges yet. You, you're praising God or are you going for the pledge? Okay. Fine. Thank you very much. And if the Lord speaks to your heart a little later and you need to help, you can just see brother and sister Richards or sister Yvonne Rowe. Let me hear you praise the Lord again, folks. We are here to worship the Lord. Do you hear that? This, this, um, today might be the last service for the year. Everybody hear that? Say so you're glad. We praise the Lord, everybody. No watch night service. So you can go to a little extension. You can go over a little later than the usual. All right, is that all right with everybody? He has a rope to fit me, Lord God Almighty. She was saying, uh, Sister, Rob, she was saying earlier on that the, the, the clothes you have on, Sister Clark, might not be something new. Oh, praise the Lord. Or sometimes you have on some clothes and it, you don't know that it doesn't fit you so much. Uh, but Jesus have a rope, Lord God Almighty. Ministers, are you there with me? Brother Blair, you, 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 your clothes might not be the best clothes. Huh? Because it was made by a who? A man or a woman. But Jesus Christ, God Almighty, have a robe to fit me. Musician, give me them thing there. Oh, I'm okay. here. Just keep your fingers going. Gentlemen, 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 don't sing it. Don't sing it. Wow. 
testimony. Testimony. I'm just glad to be alive and to be a part of this beautiful family of God. I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad that I have no God for myself. I know my robe is going to fit me. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah to the King. I was just saying to myself earlier, and I don't know what the 25th means to so a lot of persons. But I, I don't care about the day when he, when, 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 when you say you were born. I'm just glad that Jesus came. And when he came and he, he spin me around and he, he, he shaped me up away and gave me, I, I, I was saying as a, as a minister said about the suit maybe designed by a, a female or a male. And I said that's a tailor made, but it, it is a godly made suit that you will receive from the Lord. And so the shoulders will be right. That the curved part will be right, the length will be right, and everything will be right. I'm glad that I'm in the service, I'm glad I'm in God, I'm glad I'm saved, and I'm glad that I'm going to heaven. Oh, sing on. I know my robe is on a bit. Praise the Lord, everybody. You know, when you see me praising God, just leave me, make me praise God. You know, when you see me worshiping, just leave me, make me worship God. You know, I remember time gone when I knew where in the mango tree to find the third mango. To pick it, pick it in the night and come eat it with black pepper and salt. But God is a good God. Look what God did when he washed me. I'm saved and I know that I am. I just want to live for him. Couple, couple, couple of years, couple of years ago, uh, my first car was a, a X card car, and it gone down and couldn't fix. Lord God, at top, I was driving on the Mandela Highway, and somebody, somebody, somebody ran into the back of the car, and then when I understand, it's like it's my neighbor said them set it up. Uh, that you know what I mean? I was so glad. Set it up again, neighbor. Okay. I know my robe. No, my robe is gonna fit me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's gonna fit me well. Jesus made it ready to fit me. Save my soul from hell. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's gonna fit me. Oh, no, 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 no,
Anybody else? Anybody else? Yes. Yes. Excuse me, let me. Anybody else? A- anybody else? Sister Brown, Sister Brown, hold on there. Sister, she stand first. Run it quickly, Sister Brown. Yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh God of mercy. Thank you very much. Hold on the folks. No, 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 start clap it until we have everybody through. You can go quickly for me, please, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Anybody else? Anybody else? We, we, we're gonna go through quickly. Sing us. Excuse me, let me pray the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Me, oh, God of mercy. One more time. My God, God as we are about to collect your offering, hey, Jesus, God. I pray oh, that your Jesus. spirit will touch it, multiply God. it, stretch it, God. Those who have not to give, Lord, I pray that you'll provide for them so that they may give even of their self and oh, their worship. God. I pray, God, that as it go forth, that you will multiply, bless it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just before you move, ushers, uh, the, the, the singers, will you just come here right now, just before the usher moves, just hold on a little bit, ushers. We're going to get the singers worship in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me hear everybody praise the Lord. Ushers, you may go. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Isn't he good? He's wonderful. He's wonderful. Bread of life sent down from glory. Many things you were on earth, a holy king, a carpenter. You are the living word. Bread of heaven sent down from glory. Thank you. 
that he decided that he would tore down these barns uh, and build some bigger one. But I heard the words uh, that thou fool, 
night, this very night, thy soul is required of me. Brother Aling, I put a question to you. You are in church and let's say a prophet who you know is a prophet. He has never prophesied wrong. And he tell you that you are going to dead tomorrow. That God spoke to him and said you are going to die tomorrow. What would you do today? I will seek after God. I will seek after the one who proclaims such a thing. And I will seek his mercies. I will then commit my life unto the God who said, let there be, and there was. Because I would recognize that there is no other God but him. And there is no one who is able to grant me deliverance but God. So to answer your question, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. Thank you, brother. Listen to folks. Listen. We called today, the 25th of December, don't we? We are in the house of the Almighty God, but there are souls that are preparing to celebrate Christmas tomorrow. How you know? How you know and what is going to happen? So I put it to you folks who have not yet met the Lord Jesus Christ. If there's one man or one woman who is sitting before me who is conscious, recognize that there is a God and God is to be served and you have not yet repented of your sins neither have you yet baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and your desire is to do so now can I see by the raising of your hand wherever you are wherever you are I, I, I don't want to get it mixed up because we see some hands we see some hands raising, worshiping the Lord. And any hands that go up after this, it must be a soul that need baptism. Am I seeing two hands? Let me be more specific. Will you stand? You need the baptism in Jesus' name. Will you stand? Did you hear me clearly? You need the baptism in Jesus' name. Don't you? Will you raise your hand again? If you need the baptism in Jesus' name. Do I have a soul that need the baptism in Jesus' name? Can I see by the raising of your hand, wherever you are? One man, one woman, one boy, one girl. You are an individual. You recognize that Jesus Christ is to be served. Baptism in Jesus' name is a must. If there's a soul that so desire to be baptized in the name of the Lord, will you raise your hand wherever you are? Wherever you are. Lord God Almighty. Church, I understand we have to go, but give me a little bit more time. If it's even half a minute, allow me to go through with another appeal. Do I have an individual that need the baptism in Jesus' name? Will you raise your hand? If you hear me clearly, will you stand? Pause a minute, church. Pause a minute, church. Can you walk forward? Can you come forward? Yeah. Baptism in Jesus' name. Can you come forward? Oh, God Almighty. Baptism in Jesus' name. Can you come forward? Lord God Almighty. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us. Oh, God, church. Can you just face the audience? This fine gentleman and this lovely young lady, they come forward for baptism in Jesus' name. Do I have another? Uh, do I have another? Oh God, I'm going to let the singers sing again just before they go back to where they are sitting. But do I have another soul that need a baptism in Jesus' name? Do I have another man, another woman, another boy, another girl uh, that need a baptism in Jesus' name? Will you come forward? Oh God Almighty. Ma'am and sir, will you take time and go back to your place in a short while after the anointed preacher is through? You'll be baptizing in Jesus' name. Sing for us again, brother. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. So just beg your, your indulgence just a little bit, please. There were times this year when I thought that I was going to lose my mind. My back was against the wall and I didn't know what to do. But God kept me and he made a way. We're not singing this song because 
we want to get people jumping up and down but when we reflect on where God has brought us from and where we are today thank God that he made a way
wouldn't have made it just five hours for you, God. I'm standing here. I know we can all testify that 2016 has been a rough year, but God made it possible that we have made it this far. I know to thank God. We want to thank you, God, for making a way. You made a way. You're my provider, you're my sustainer, my deliverer. You made a way. You're my protector, when my way maker. God bless you. God bless you in the name of the Lord. Sit worshiping the Lord, folks. We're not through yet. We're going to have the choir singing for us now. And then shortly after, we're going to have the man of God with the anointed word. He that believe it and is baptized. Uh, fire and I've been through the flood been broken in pieces and left all alone but through it all God kept me and through it all God blessed me and I still have a praise inside Yes, I still have a praise inside of me. Do you know what I'm talking about right now? Oh, I've been through the fire. Come on, choir, sing with me. Some of you have been broken.
hands right now. Lift your hands up. Thank God for last last month. Come on. And thank you for the month before that. And the one before that. And everyone leading up to this year. Come on. Find something to be thankful for him. He's brought us through a mighty long way. And if you're here and you don't believe he can make a way, I'm here to tell you he's already done it. And he'll do it again. Come on, everybody, let's sing. Right. One more time, from the recesses of your heart, come on, sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, one more time. Deep down, hallelujah. 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 Lord, I give myself to you. Here I am, Lord. Have your way. Lord, I love you. to have their preacher and uh, we're gonna ask uh, the, the, the ministers you're gonna pray for the preacher right now and uh, we're gonna ask the choir just to turn it down a little bit while the minister praying for the preacher just now ministers ministers you're gonna pray you're gonna pray you're gonna lay hands on the, 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 the preacher right now and the, the choir you're gonna turn it down a little bit while the ministers pray right now in the name of the lord as low as you can go choir you go yes i Did you stand, everyone? Everybody, please stand. Uh, we are about to receive the word of the Almighty God. We ask you to stand, everybody. Stand, everybody. No, dearly beloved, in everything there is going to be a loss, and we're not sure that what's going to happen for next year. We don't plan for that. But this might be the last message. Never can tell. If you are ready, whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming. However, at this appointed time, we have our minister, a young minister, one who is full of the Holy Ghost and trust and believe in God. He's about to deliver the word, thus said the Lord God Almighty. Folks, we ask that you stay exactly where you are. Just trust your faith that nothing will not happen to you before the preacher is through. Because this is the final message for this week. This is the final message for this week. And remember, there is no other service for the rest of the week. 
So therefore, we ask that you stay on inside the house of God. Listen to the word of the Almighty God. While our minister, Brother Andrew Martin, coming to the podium to deliver. Thus said the Lord God Almighty. Therefore, congregation, Deacon Martin, Deacon Martin, congregation, with the words of the Almighty God, put your hands together, church. Lift your hands and begin to worship the King. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. There is none like him. There is none like him. There is none like him. Do you believe it this morning? There is none like him. Lift your hands one more time. Worship the King, the great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. We Exalt thee, I exalt thee. the King of Kings. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are worthy, you are worthy to be praised. Praise God. Praise God, praise God. Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning? Are you happy to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. We serve a great, big, big, wonderful God. He's always victorious. He's always watching over us. And he's exalted on high. Praise God. I'm going to ask you to turn with me in your Bible to the book of Joshua, chapter 24. Joshua, chapter 24, from verse 15 to verse 25. Joshua chapter 24, from verse 15 to verse 25. Praise God. I'm going to ask that when you find the scripture that you stand for the reading of the word of God. Praise God. If you have found it, say amen. Let us read together. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve whether the gods which were fathers served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. 
But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way where we went and among all the people through whom we pass. And the Lord drove out from before us all the people, even the Amorites which dwell in the land. Therefore we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is an holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you. After that, he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye are witnesses against yourselves, that ye have chosen you the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statue and an ordinance in Shechem. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise God. The God that we serve is a good God. Praise God, everybody. There is none like him. There is none to be compared to him. Scripture says, from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the very same name of the Lord, it should be praise. There is none like him. There is no God before him. There will be no God behind him. The prophet Isaiah said, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord. He said, And my servants whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am what he. Before me, God said, there was no God formed. Uh, neither shall there be any after him. He is the great I am. Hallelujah. He is worthy of praise. He is the Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He is the Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. He's our Jehovah Nissi. Praise God. The God that we serve, there is no second. Hallelujah. There's no third or fourth. But he's God all by himself. Hallelujah. And he deserves all the praises and all the glory. Every praise must be to our God. Hallelujah. Every glory belongs to him. Because he's great. And he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. David said, I will bless the Lord what at all times. Uh, his praise shall what continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. Hallelujah. The humble shall thereof and be glad. He said, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. And let us exalt his name together. He's a great God and he's worthy of praise. Praise God. In the scripture we just read speaks of about a gentleman that was called Joshua. Uh, Joshua was not any ordinary person. I don't believe he was ordinary because he took the baton from a person that was called Moses. And if you know anything about the patriarch Moses, you know he was a big shoes to fit. But Joshua, after the children of Israel, uh, hallelujah, didn't believe God at a place called Kedish Barnea. 
And the Bible said they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. And all that generation, 20 years and above, died. The person that took over the baton was this man called Joshua. Joshua was not an ordinary leader. And the scripture tell you clearly that he was the man that took over and he led the children of Israel from that point on into the promised land. And there was a lot of battles they fought. Actually, Joshua, there is only one record where Israel failed a battle and it was at Ai. And it was because of Achan's sin. But everywhere else, there was great victory for the children of Israel. And now we find in Joshua chapter 24 that Joshua stood before the people. I don't believe that this was the first time that he was standing before the people giving them a word. But I believe that the word that he was giving them at this time was a bit different. I believe in previous times when he stood before them, he would have told them what he's planning to do for next year. Or what he's planning to do to conquer this particular place or that particular place. But by this time, Joshua was old. Hallelujah. Having served the children of Israel for about 25 years, he was now old. He was not, no longer looking forward, but he was now looking back. And he recorded to them what God did for children of Israel, even from the time of Abraham. If you read Joshua chapter 24, from about verse 3 going down, he gives a record of how God delivered the children of Israel all the way to where they are now. He reminded them that long ago, their father lived among strange gods. He reminded them that God took out Abraham from Terah. Hallelujah. Which was his father. Took him out of the land of the Chaldeans that he might serve God. He reminded them that God gave Abraham Isaac. Hallelujah. And he also gave him Jacob and Esau. And he said, God, he was God who put Esau in the hills that was well, a country here that was called Seir to possess it. But he passed on his line to Jacob. He reminded them that it was God who, when they went down into Egypt, it was God who sent Moses for them. Moses and Aaron went for them. He reminded them that it was God who plagued the children of Israel. And he did it for their sakes. And after he had plagued them, he brought them out of Egypt. Joshua reminded them that God brought their fathers out of Egypt by the way of the Red Sea. And he said, look here, while you were going by the way of the Red Sea, the Egyptians didn't want to let you go, so they pursued you. And he reminded them that it was God who brought darkness between them and the Egyptians. He reminded them that it was God who brought them into the land of the Amorites. Who live on the other side of Jordan. And can I tell you something? God have a way of putting his stamp on whoever he places as leader. Because when he brought Moses to lead the children of Israel and they went to the Red Sea, it seemed as if they couldn't go through. And Moses prayed and God said, stretch forth your rod. And Moses stretched his rod and the water parted and they went through. But when Joshua took over, because God wanted to stamp his approval upon Joshua, when they went to Jordan, Hakosha, and they were walking through and they had the Ark of the Covenant. God said, okay, man, just step in the water. So he reminded them that it was God who was with Joshua. And as they stepped in wholeheartedly, you know the funny thing about that Jordan River? All six priests had to step in before the water parted. God laid something in my heart. You cannot be in church half-heartedly. Everything has to be involved for God to make a way. Yeah. 
But he reminded them that after they went to the Jordan, it was God who fought. So God brought the Amorites before them and God fought for them. And they possessed the land. He reminded them that it was he God who destroyed them before, destroyed the Amorites before them. He reminded them of Balak, the son of Zippor, the king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel. And when he couldn't win, he sent Balaam, the son of Ber, to curse them. But I thank God that God did not listen to Balaam. But while he was trying to curse them, God blessed them. And God delivered them out of their hand. He reminded them that they went through the Jordan and came to Jericho. And the leaders of Jericho fought against them. And they won the battle again. With God's help. The Amorites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites. The Hittites and the Gerizites. Everybody that came before them. God gave them the victory. God gave them into their hand. Joshua reminded them that God gave them a land. On which they had not labored. And a city that they did not build. God gave them a vineyard. And places to plant. And as I look through the scriptures, I begin to realize how faithful our God is. He has a way of preparing things before us. Preparing things ahead of us. But Joshua knew that this time was a transition time. So he gave an account of all of this. So he could have reminded them. Or tell them. I'm about to go up the scene. But be reminded about all of this. Will you serve God? This morning we can look back. In our lives. And we can say we have come this far by faith. Leaning on God. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace. None of us would have been here this morning. I can hear the prophet Jeremiah crying. It is of the Lord's mercies. Uh, While we are not consumed. When you look back into your life. You can say like Israel. It will be a shadow of a doubt. That it was God why you are here this morning. Many times you should have been down and out. But it was God. Some of us felt sick. And we thought it was time for death. But it was God. First let me remind you. Of where God brought you from. Hallelujah. Think about the many times this year. When you had heartaches. Where you felt that everything was crumbling at your feet. Your finances was going wrong. Your spiritual life feel like it's not going anywhere. Some of us when we started the year thought we would not have made it this far. But God. And when we look back we can say God has been a faithful God. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. Hallelujah. 
How many times did you think that this was going to be the end of your job? How many times you messed up and you know you shouldn't be where you are? How many times you realize that if God wasn't on your side, you would have been dead? Hallelujah. But God, this morning, God, we thank you. We thank you. When I look back over my life, the songwriter says, and I think things over, I can truly say, is there anybody who could give a testimony? You came to your Jordan and God parted it. You went to your Jericho and God flattened it. Hako Shadaba. And when things seemed down and out and there was an ache and God got rid of it. But God, who is like unto you, O oh God? I'm happy that Jesus is the author. I'm happy that Jesus is the finisher of my faith. I am happy. That Jesus made a way for me. And I'm happy. That I'm right here at the border. And I say the border. Because I believe that we're in a time of transition. That is why Joshua called everybody. He called the elders. He called the priests. He called the children. He called the old men. The young women. It was a time of transition for them. Joshua was going out. But the salvation that you have is not about who leads the man. But it's who leading who is God. Joshua knew he would not have been on the scene anymore. But he wanted to ensure that he renewed the covenants. Somebody needs to renew some covenants with God. As we transition into a new year, we need to understand that the battle for your souls and for mine has an intensified. The devils and their systems has its tentacles in every corner of human lives. I can tell you the devil has slowly put forward agendas and bringing people to the point where there's someone have one foot in church and one foot out. The devil seems to modernize his appearance. But the motive behind his action is still ancient. He wants to get you down and out. He has one aim to steal. He has one aim to kill and to destroy. This world has become a wicked place. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12, because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. 2017 is not business as usual. I don't believe it. But we must decide in our minds that we will serve the Lord. Tell the person beside you, I will serve the Lord. Now that person was a conflict. Tell the other person on the other side, I will serve. Abosha. We renew our covenants with King. The things that we see on TV and internet has become the norm. 
And this norm has affected the values. Hallelujah. Of those things that we indulge. That we indulge in them. Many people today find it the norm to live together in fornication. The blood of Jesus. It is sick when people begin to tolerate fornication, adultery, and homosexuality. The blood of Jesus. People of God, there is still a violation. If you do these things, it is still against the word of God. And as we're about to transition, make up your mind that you're going to serve the Lord. What we find as a result of many people indulging in these things. Fornication and living together unmarried. That you have a lot of helpless children. And many millions die because of abortion. Abortion is still wrong. If you come in fornication, you get pregnant. Don't abort it. It's double sin. Let me say that again. It is wrong to commit fornication. The blood of Jesus is against it. Homosexuality, double wrong in my eyes. I still pray, make me can't deal with that one. The blood of Jesus. But if you're going to do a thing and you get pregnant, don't abort it. I don't know what I'm talking to. Holy Ghost. Joshua said, I saw me and my house. Now, my house is not necessarily the house of Martins. My house is anybody who is willing to serve the Lord. You don't realize it. But we have to make up our minds that we are not going to bow. I believe Joshua saw ahead what would have happened in the book of Judges. If you read the book of Judges, there's a cycle up and down, up and down. And the Bible said that Joshua said the word of the Lord as God spoke to him. In other words, it was a prophetic word. And a prophetic word is not always a word that speaks a future tense. That's foretelling prophecy. But a prophetic word can be related to what is happening now. We call it force telling prophecy. And the man of God spoke. And he asked them three times, will you serve the Lord? They said, yes, we will. Will you serve the Lord? Will you serve the Lord? Habo Shadaba. We have to decide in our minds to hold on to this apostolic doctrine. You're not Catholics. You're not Trinitarians. And I say that without no apology. It was just in this week. A 
Apostolics took me on, literally cussed me off. They said to me, everything you say is about apostolic, apostolic. What? Them? They say, you're frightened? Yes! First cost me ever say, look here, I need to go back and go look at scriptures in context. Because <laughs> I quote it to them from Galatians 1 8, which says, Though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you, let him be a curse. Person said to me, You need to go back and go find out the context of Galatians. I laugh. We say, Okay. What's the context of Galatians? They say the context of Galatians is they were Judaizers and they're telling me things I know. They are Judaizers who came into the church and they were bringing false teaching about you must obey the laws of Moses. I say you get it head on. Them say, so why are you quoting the scripture? They say, because you forget that there's a law of hermeneutics that state exegesis come before exposition. Let me explain. The person know me on Facebook, but they don't know that I teach biblical hermeneutics. So what they were going into was stuff that I know, I love. Mr. Why the scripture states and what you said was in context. What we normally do is that we look at scriptures and we take the immediate context as it is. But that immediate context can be applied and that's what you call exposition. So in order for me not to quote the scripture out of context, I know that he was talking about Judaizers. But how does exposition comes in? Because if anybody else come apart from them and preach anything else, it still apply. Let them be a curse. We must repent our sins. It still applies. You must get baptized in Jesus' name. I never know it change. Didn't the Bible say neither is your salvation in any other? For there is none other name under heaven. Give no among men whereby we must be. That's Acts 4 12, right? Didn't the Bible say that whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of who? You see, the devil don't like the name. That's how the Bible said, Philippians, God had highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus. I am apostolic because I believe in what the apostles preach. I can't accept fourth century doctrine as doctrine. And for those who don't know what I'm talking about, Trinitarian was developed fully at the courts of Constantinople in the fourth century. But the gospel that you preach started on the day of Pentecost. For Jesus said upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the first century. So we still believe in baptism in Jesus' name. And you have to get the Holy Ghost. And when you get the Holy Ghost, you don't know, still don't want man to say I feel different. No. Isaiah said with stammering lips. And another tongue. The Bible said when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all together in one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sword from heaven 
as of a rushing mighty wind. What did it fill all the house where they were sitting? They appeared unto them cloven tongues, like as a fire. The Holy Ghost is fire. And it sat upon each of them. Look what happened to get the Holy Ghost. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak. I see a guy on YouTube say, boy, speaking in tongues is easy. All you need to do is do it and let's say it. And he started to speak some something. The blood of Jesus. The Spirit of God must give the utterance. You have to make up in your mind. Be willing to be different. Peter said we are a royal priesthood. A holy nation. A peculiar people. You're different. You're not like everybody else. You're the apple of God's eye. <laughs> when God says coming back, he's not coming back for everybody. He's not coming back for everybody from every denomination. The blood of Jesus. If you don't accept this gospel, you're a curse. The good thing about this thing though. Is that the word of God is there to prove it. I don't need to read no book of fathers. But father this and this said this in this. No. What the word of God say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. The Bible said it's profitable for doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for what? Instruction in righteousness. If you are here today and you're unsaved and God come tomorrow, you're not going to make it. Even though you are in church today. And I mean so. so. The Bible says in St. John 3, 5 that Jesus is a man of the Pharisees and Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The Bible said the man came to Jesus by night and said, Master, we know you must be a teacher of God. No man can do these miracles that you do except God do with him. And the man was so right because which man you know can t- I saw like brother Ron Campbell. Which man do you know turns water into wine? Which man do you know go up to a grave and say roll with a stone? Wait a And the man just said Lazarus the man never dead one day, you know. Matter of fact, the sister was right. By now, him stink. Which man you know? Send him disciples away on the boat. And in the night, them see somebody who up on the water. Don't need a boat to come back for him. If we go out to them, somebody says a ghost. He said, No, it's me. It's like himself. Are you God? Bid me come. Which man you know can make people step out of boat? So Nicodemus was right. You must be a teacher come from God. Nobody can do the miracles where you do except God be with him. But Jesus moved to the more important thing. Jesus said you must be born again. The poor young man confused. First time the terminology ever used in scripture. You are telling me say I need to go back into my mother's womb and be born again. <laughs> Jesus said to him, no, 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 that means trouble. Except a man be born of water. What is that? Back it up with Peter. Repent. And be baptized, every one of you, what? For the remission of sins. And of the spirit. What is that? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 
Except a man be born of this, you cannot see. You know, you cannot enter, you know. You say you cannot even see. We have to decide in our minds that going forward, we cannot afford to carry no strange fire in the house of God. The apostle John said, love not the world. Neither the things that are in the world. Which means that you can't entertain any and anything. Some of these things that we're sitting and watch on TV, we need to stop. Because when we come to the house of God, we there's always a dead sometime. It has to, to be different. Transition time. New levels. This is faith chapel, the house of faith. We not stay one place too long. And I can tell you, it's moving time again. Abo Shada. We have decided that we're going to live and pray for each other. I need you to survive, Sister June. Sir Chesan. Brother Nicholas, good to see you. I need you to survive. Today, more than ever, people are living primarily for themselves and their, their own happiness. It's about me. It's a lie. That's the devil wicked, you know. Anytime you start, say, I, 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 too much. Remember, Isaiah, I will ascend. I will do this. I will do It's what I feel. It's I. No. The blood of Jesus against that. We need each other. Because we're going to go up together. Not leaving you. Transition time. Nowadays we need to realize and decide in our minds that we're going to take up our cross. We're going to follow Jesus. Don't let it be a foreign concept. We have to die daily. We have to decide in our minds that we're going to be faithful to the things of God. This year passed already and God kept us. You know what I like about that scripture in, in Joshua 24? Even though Israel sinned, look at the record. Every time when Joshua was recording what they did, he made no mention of their failures. In other words, he only looked at the high points. Because when God forgive you, who cares about the failure? Only the devil alone went trying to. I want him to bring the book to Jesus. It's a white page. I must say, God, me write it right so. But all me I see right now is either white or red. White mean rub out and red mean it covered by the blood. So you probably make some mistakes that the year coming down. It probably was hard, yes. But guess what? You make it now. Look at the high points. Who keep you? God. Who give you food? God. For two weeks, me sick. You never see me last week, me sick. Me I preach today. Last week, me sick. Me feel like me never dead. I thought this was it. Me kick the bucket. Normally, I would take care of the two girls by myself because my wife was studying for the exam. And this particular time, if I call Sister Ramsey, help, I'm dying. <laughs> but me now, look, I am okay today. Why? <laughs> so I look at all the high points. Forget most of the stuff we do that year. Some people never live so good. You never talk to somebody. Make it right today, though. (laughs) 
But as of 2017, have a different concept in your mind. I'm transitioning because Jesus is coming back. You probably don't realize it. I was saying it every day. I may tell you this world will boil up. The only reason why some things that happen yet is because the church is here. Thessalonians say, He that let it will let until he be taken out of the way. Let me break that down. He that restrains will continue to restrain. I call to our next version. Until he be taken out of the way. As long as the church is here, the Holy Ghost is here. The devil will push hard. But if you shine light, darkness can't take it over. So we're going into 2017 as light. Well aware that Jesus, the soon coming king, the conquering light of the tribe of Judah, say, I come quickly. Well aware in our minds that any day now, we are go up. So we can't bury my stake too deep in where I work. <laughs> Can you know that's happening to a lot of people? As we transcend into the next year, you're going to realize that work becomes more and more and more hard. You can't come Bible study because of work. You can't come Sunday morning church because of work. You can't come Sunday. If you miss church every week, something wrong. You ever seen a body go for weeks without eating? Not even my car can drive for two weeks without gas. After one week, I'm going to try one light. Come on. You get a light too? <laughs> it means that there must be a time set apart for God. We are coming to the house of God and God fully up again. I don't like preach again, you know. It's on our way. Sometimes you won't come to the house of God, you won't sit down and get a word. I don't know how people are running down. I want the pulpit to preach. I want God to fill me up so I can make it up. But if I call you, though, don't tell me, say. <laughs> But we have to decide in our minds, have to make up our minds that we are going to live for Jesus. No matter what. We know the night service tonight. No matter what, as of today, we are going to live for Jesus. And you can tell me happy holidays, but don't tell me Merry Christmas. All right? <laughs> There's a difference. All right. Live for Jesus. Let's live for Jesus. You have to decide in your mind that you're going to be faithful to the house of God. Faithful to the things of God. Come Bible study. You can't have Bible study for the year and you don't come one. Seriously? Not even one? You have Sunday night service and some people don't come. And it's not like they, they, they cannot come, you know. Because they're at home watching whatever come on on church on TV Sunday night. And some people say the children are got tired. So them care. The blood of Jesus. May I come to church for me at 12. Well, I'm born and grow, but may I come to church, get saved for me at 12 years old. I'm a day at Sunday night time and God has blessed me now. Till I bless me. I don't miss out nothing at school. And I don't understand why parents would want to keep away their children from the house of God. And then when they grow big, they say, don't want to come to church. Because you never bring them, you never break it into their mind that church is an important thing in their life. You have to decide to love God with all your heart. Jesus don't want half. Jesus has never taken half. If you decide to give God half, he's not going to take it. Decide that you're going to love God with all your heart. 
Like the three Hebrew boys in Babylon decide that you're not going to bow. Make everybody else bow. I'm not going to bow. Like Mordecai, when he man come and say, boy, you have to bow. He decides that you're not going to bow. Everybody might forget, but me, I still go and be apostolic. I still go and look apostolic. I still go and talk apostolic. I still go and behave like one. When I go to my office, they must know I'm a child of God. Pastor, call me to pray. Make them say around your boy, I'm not going to talk them things because I'm a Christian. Not the other way around. We can't talk anything around him, man. He's a Christian. <laughs> we have to decide in our minds that we're going to be different. Different. And the ultimate person came and decided to say, I'm not going to bow. And the, the devil wicked enough. The devil went to Jesus and said, bow down before me and I'll give you all. You think, who is you? Understand that the devil is going to attack you. And understand that when the attack comes, it's not the brother or the sister in church that you attack them. Because that's the next thing too. Me not chat to sister so and so. Because sister so and so did this and this to be the brother of Jesus. The Bible said we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Attack when come from everybody. And then it's sometimes Peter go to Jesus and say something and Jesus will rebuke him. That's right. That's right. Decide in our minds that we're going to live for God. Many things are happening in our world today. But as Joshua said, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. Choose today that you're going to live for Jesus. Choose from this point on. This is the last Sunday of the year. Choose in your minds that you're going to serve Jesus with everything that you have, with your whole heart. God, forget about the year. I don't, I, I, God, God, there's a word from God. You're not going to hold you accountable if you repent. Besides, from this point on, you're going to make it right. And the Bible tells you, now, because Ezekiel, you know, if a man live ungodly all his life, and in the last point of his life, he start to live right. Everything is from before. But if a man live righteous all his life, on the end point, he decides he's going to start slacking up. No problem. They can't have Sunday night and the choir empty. Choir members, you know, come out now. Are they me for sit? <laughs> People, we need to serve God. We are Christians. This is where we belong. This is our home. This is church. This is our battleground. This is our camp. This is where we need to come and get fueled up and get training. And get ready to serve God. Next year going to be different. You're not going to be the same. Russia get mad. The US um, have a mad president. Everything is going mad. Now what we need to do now is decide in our minds that we're going to serve God. Because anything can happen. Anytime. But we have to decide in our minds that we're going to serve God. Irrespective of the odds, we're going to serve God. Choose ye this day whom you will serve. God bless you. Man of God. Amen, amen. True word from God. Hallelujah. Thank you for those words, Jesus. We're going to live for God. Amen. amen. Come on, come on. We are going to live for God. Amen. amen. Come on, tell the person next to you, irrespective of what I face next year, I'm going to live for God. Come, tell somebody on the other side. Sister Clark, irrespective of what I face next year, I'm going to live for God. Hallelujah. It's important that we have a made-up mind that we are going to live for Him. Irrespective of the circumstances. Irrespective of how the adversary push against me. I'm going to make up my, make up my mind. You know, you know, as we look back over this year, you know, we try to live for Jesus. And, you know, sometimes we, we, we slip. Yeah, man. Minister, we slip. Oh, me want to know, I know me alone as minister slip. Sometimes we slip. We want to live for God. And we say, God and me do that. You have to go before God and repent. But the minister said, you know, God will remember your sins no more. Hallelujah. Do I have somebody, those persons who stand up and came up the front that they want baptism?
I'm going to invite you to come again. And just in case you came in late and you made up in your mind that, that you want a change and that you want to serve God. Bible says, except you'll be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Which means that you have to be repented of your sins. You must be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And for those who are in the house who are baptized but you don't receive the Holy Spirit, you need the Holy Spirit. For the Bible says, Romans 8, 9, that without the Spirit of God, you are none of His. Let me invite the congregation to stand right now. And those who need the ministers to come and lay their hands and pray for them. You feel like you want to come and just talk to God. Let me open this altar right now and invite somebody to come. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Do I have somebody else? Do I have somebody else? Do I have somebody else? Just before you go through those doors, tomorrow is promised unto no man. You know now what the future holds, but you are here right now. You have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Let me invite you to come. And as they come, let me invite the saints to come along with them. Just rest your hand and somebody pray for them. Worship. While the singers sing, just worship God. Amen. And they are coming. They are coming. They are coming. They are coming. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. As you come to the altars, let me invite you to just, you know, shut in with God. Shut your eyes. Don't, don't pay attention to anybody that is around you. As you come, you're unsaved. Just, just shut your eyes. Lift those hands and just begin to talk to God. Tell God what is it that is in your spirit. What is it, you know, why you make the step to come to the altar. You know why you came. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me make another appeal. You know not what tomorrow holds. But just before you go through those doors, just come to the altar. Please, come to the altar. I don't know what the future holds. I don't know Those who are seated to just and stand and come around the altar. You're not leaving right now. Just come around the altar.
trip so rough and warm so warm so 